Chapter 8. It's not easy choosing a new best friend. I sit on my bed, staring at the list of kids who are in my class. First of all, it's going to take a really long time to decide, and then what if the person I choose already has a best friend or doesn't want me as a best friend? The names are all written out in a light blue ink. I'm using a red pen to cross out all the people who could never be my best friend. Alicia Sanchez and Naomi Schwartz are already best friends. So are Freddie Romano and Gregory Gifford. A couple of the boys are very obnoxious, so I've crossed them out. I'd pick a slug with rabies before I could pick them. Hannah Burton is much too neat and cares too much about looking good. I can never be best friends with someone who has a list on the door of what she wears every day. She does that so that she never wears the same thing twice for at least two weeks. Once she had a pyjama party at her house and I saw that her closet is colour coded and arranged by how long everything is. Shirts, skirts, pants and dresses. She's a definite no. Brandy Colwyn has a purple star by her name. She's a definite maybe. So is Mark Manchester. Frederick Alden, however, is an absolute no. He's one of those pick and chew nose people. Ugh. There's a knock on my door. Amber, honey, may I come in? I put the list under my pillow. Sure. My mother comes in carrying a bowl and two spoons. I know that this is not nutritionally sound and we shouldn't turn to food, but I can't help myself today. She sits down on my bed looking into the bowl. I say... My favourite, as I see double fudge brownie mix with all the ingredients but unbaked. Thanks, Mum. I give her a hug. Promise me that for the rest of the week you'll take fruit to school for dessert. She holds back the spoon. I promise. She hands the spoon over. We both eat out of the bowl for a while and then my mother says, Amber, I want to talk to you. There's no such thing as a free brownie mix, I think. She continues, what's going on between you and Justin? Why have you two stopped talking? How do I tell her about the chewing gum ball? How he won't talk to me, how he won't talk to me about leaving? How he acts as if he's going is one of the easiest things in the world. I shake my head. If I start to talk about it, I'll start to cry. My mother puts the bowl and spoons down on my desk and puts her arm around me. Amber, she kisses the top of my head. I don't pull away when she does that, although I usually do when she does it in front of other people. Amber, she kisses the top of my head again. I know that you're going to miss Justin. The two of you have a very special friendship. Not anymore, you don't, I say, starting to sniffle. He's a jerk, a total and absolute jerk, she continues. It's hard when people leave you. Sometimes, even though it's not your fault, you think it is. I hate him. The tears start, even though I don't want them to. No, you don't. My mother looks at me. Honey, you're very angry now, but you know that Justin is your friend. He's not, I say. So tell me what's going on. She smooths my hair. It'll be easier if you can talk about it. I shake my head. Continuing to smooth my hair, she says, Sometimes when people have to leave each other, they act as if it isn't happening or they pick a fight so it won't seem so hard to go. In this case, it looks like both. But think of all the good times you and Justin are missing right now. Because you've stopped talking. I start to cry more. I hate to cry. Sometimes I'm afraid that if I start, I'll never stop. And now I've started, my mother hugs me. She... She hugs, I cry, we sit for a while and then I back away. Mr Coven says that our bodies are made of 80% liquid. The way I've been crying, the weather bureau call, could call me a draft, drought. Sorry. Thanks for the hug, Mum, I say. I'll be okay now. Do you want to be alone, she asks. I nod. I'll be in the living room if you need me. She gives me one more hug and then walks out. I stare at her as, if she, as she leaves. I'm so lucky to have a mother who doesn't act like my feelings don't count just because I'm a kid. I take up my list and look at it, then I rip it up. Getting a best friend isn't like making a shopping list. I take Justin's school picture out of the drawer by my bed. It's a little messy since I drew black eye on him and used the red pen to give him chicken pox. I look at the picture for a while and think, he's going to miss me. Who else is going to whisper the correct word to him in the reading group? Who else is going to make faces when some goofy grown-up says, so your name is Justin, like in the sing-song Justin time? Who else is going to give up? Her cookie wafers for him. Cheer for him, even when he strikes you out. Who else is going to convince Dint Danny that it's a big boy to make his brother's bed for him? I'll tell you something. He's going to miss me. I'll tell you something else. I'm going to miss him.